Hello, welcome to This Family Does Everything. My name is Alexandria, and this is a video on Daryl Brooks and Judge Doro. So let's sit back, watch, and analyze the Daryl Brooks trial. Sir, state your name for the record, please. I'm here as a third party intervener in the matter, in this matter, as authorized representative for my client. I accept for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments. And for the record, I do not consent to or agree to being called that name that you have identified here today. The record should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody in street clothes, specifically a suit and tie and a mask. Um, I just also want to make a record quickly that um, a number of documents were left by Mr. Brooks in the holding area uh, just outside the courtroom. They have been put on his desk today. It's all of the autopsy protocols that were provided to him yesterday, the hard copies, that is, uh, the diagrams that were uh, presented in court related to those protocols, and a copy of the pretrial offer. So I just wanted to make that record. Hold on. Not right yet, please. So um, I have been advised that all of the jurors are here and ready to go. I presume the state has available its next witness. Yes. We do, and we'd also move states exhibit 162A into evidence. As to 162A, Mr. Brooks, any um, position on that? Yeah, I object. I haven't even seen it, first of all. And second of all, again, for the record. Mr. Brooks, I'm just dealing only with the uh, exhibit right now. Sorry for the interruption, but I need to uh, do that without interruption from you. Uh, 162A was a screen capture uh, that related to an annotation that a witness made. Um, I believe that was during witness number 34. Yes, that was uh, Mr. Hallmark, and so based upon that, uh, Exhibit 162A is received, and I will so advise the jury uh, when they come in. Uh, sir, I'm not going to address any preliminary matters at this point. I've already addressed uh, a number of things yesterday. The jury is to be brought out. No, there, there were some things that needed to be discussed about the paperwork from yesterday. Um, we'll take that up on a break. You can look over it. You can make a note and pass it to I've my already, I've clerk. I've already looked over it, Your Honor, with all respect. I think there's some things. Mr. Brooks, need. I'm not going to deal with it right now. Need, it's paperwork. I just wanted it notated that you left it, and now it's being provided not, to you talking, again. I'm not referring to that paperwork. I'm not right. dealing with the paperwork from the clerk of court's office either. I am not the custodian. We're going to bring the jury out. Okay, but she should, Mr. Brooks, she should know that she's trying Mr. to Brooks, get me I, to pay. Stop. I am not addressing it. it. It has to be addressed. All right, I'm going to take a quick break and make sure the jury is ready. And if we'll I, don't, if the I don't address it now. All right, thank you. The jury can come on out. So we're not going to address this civil matter? No. I was told to pay for something under a civil statute. Mr. Statute. Brooks, I am not the custodian. Bring it up with the clerk of court. How I'm not addressing it. Up it. With the clerk of court? She, how, how am I supposed to do that? So that makes me wonder is what's being, if it's Mr. Civil Brooks, case. the jury's coming out. I'm not going to address your request for open civil, records. If it's That's, civil, I'm not the custodian be, of the records, who's being sir. Sued? My sesty trust is being sued? Civil Mr. Is civil Brooks, matter. this is an irrelevant matter that you're attempting you know, to bring up in the presence of the was, jury. The record should not, reflect I was these to interruptions. Bring it up before the jury came out, Your Honor. You and I told that. you I wasn't going to address it. Please. Okay, so it's a civil matter. How, who's being sued? 
My sense be trust because I, how can I be? Mr. Trust? Brooks, it, you're talking about an irrelevant matter between you and the it clerk of court. It wasn't irrelevant so, when I got the paperwork from the clerk of court. So I was sitting Mr. Brooks, to I'm not going to address that. The jury will so disregard I'm, I'm these irrelevant this is a comments. Matter. We haven't addressed subject matter. All right, matter thank you, everyone. Please be seated. The Jury will disregard the statements Mr. Matter. Brooks is making about subject matter jurisdiction. They are a misstatement of the law. Yes. No, All right. Not. And just like this is a civil case. Mr. Brooks, the jury's here. Please like show respect and decorum. According to this um, document, this is a Mr. civil Mr. Brooks, case, please stop. Which means someone is being sued. Civil is a suit. Mr. Brooks, you're talking about an irrelevant matter. I'm starting the trial. Of course, right here, it says it's a civil matter. Mr. Brooks so has nothing to do with My this case. My trust is being sued. I have no idea what you're talking about. So I, I got the paperwork right here. All right, I'm going to excuse the jury right about. now, given this disruption. I'll rise for the jury. This should be properly addressed before the jury even comes out. That's why I tried to properly address it before we even went on the record. Mr. Brooks, stop. I'm not going to. This is. You are. Not I'm being respectful to this proceeding you, or to with this respect, jury. No, it's not with all due respect, respect all stating due respect, that doesn't make it respectful. I was this work by you, Mr. Brooks. Monica Pass. Stop talking till the jury court. is out. Okay, Thank you. So why couldn't we address this before they came out? I'm that not going time, to address it. That bottom was the line. time to address it though. We're supposed to do all the all the addressings before the jury comes out, before we start the matter. Please I was be seated. To simply address paperwork that was given to me. By you, Your Honor. That states Mr. That Brooks, this, this states you have interrupted me matter. repeatedly. You are on the verge of being removed to that courtroom. I don't want to do on that. What, I want you to stay here. On what but you law, keep Honor? interrupting me and bringing up irrelevant matters. I told you yesterday as a courtesy that was provided to you so that you would frankly not complain that you didn't get it as quickly as possible. Okay, I am not the custodian of the records. If you have an issue with what was provided to you, how it was provided to you, then take it up with the clerk she of court. But from me. now on, I am not going to be the messenger and give you documents that you request to the custodian of the records or from the custodian of the records. They will simply have to be delivered to you at the jail. But that is in response to your discussion or whatever we want to call it this morning. I'm not taking it up. All right, it is irrelevant. It, it needed to be noted for the record. It doesn't need it to was, be noted, sir. All right, the jury's me, coming back out, and I'm going court. to warn you, if you bring this up again, I will pause, and I will remove you to the next courtroom for being disrespectful, for being interruptive, for being disruptive, and for bringing up irrelevant matters in front of this jury. You will forfeit your right to be present for the direct examination of this witness. I object to did that, Did you Your Honor. hear what I said, no, sir? No, I did not. I, I object to that, Your Honor. Well, you can and object, and your you, objection is noted, but if you interrupt record, when this jury comes the record, out, they will go. I will, rem, I will have them taken out again, and you will be removed to the next well, courtroom. You can't. What is the legal basis for that ruling, Your Honor? Illinois versus Allen, sir, and all of the and, other cases that I've cited previously. Anything, I'll make the appropriate record. Stop interrupting me. The jury's coming out. We're continuing with this trial despite your repeated efforts to disrupt. That's yesterday, sit down. Record. Yesterday alone, sir, 17 interruptions, not including the opportunity that I gave you where you spent 50 minutes, okay, discussing what were primarily either irrelevant or baseless accusations and requests not based in law or fact. I was abundantly patient with you yesterday. And you should still have to and, verify by proof any of what and I said. None of no. that is required, sir. Because and it is. You can't verify your belief. Proof. Where's that the that's the matter? law the doesn't make it so, Mr. Brooks. Your belief that these are legitimate legal positions they doesn't are. change the law and doesn't make it so. It, it, it's so again, relevant because you didn't want. To I'm going it. to step off and give Mr. Brooks five minutes to cool off, I'm and not, when that I, happens, I don't I'm bringing cool the jury I'm not, I'm out, not angry at and all. then we will I just wanted continue. To, I don't.
Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. All right, the jury can be brought out, please. again not addressing the subject matter jurisdiction yet again Dead. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, while you were not with us, the state moved Exhibit 162A, and I did receive it. With that, uh, who do we have on the witness stand? The state calls Assistant Chief Craig Learman. All right, sir, would you please stand and raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Do you recall what happened at approximately 4.39 p.m. that Sunday afternoon? Objection. Court rule. Yes. Can you tell us? Sure. Um, standing at that location, um, the parade was coming from my right to my left, so from the east to the west. Um, there was a break in the parade in front of me. Um, to my right was the Milwaukee Dancing Grannies. To my left was a group from the Catholic community of Waukesha, and there was a break in the parade right in front of me, an opening. Um, I heard the crowd um, become more excited than normal. Um, so I felt like something was coming, but I didn't know what. Didn't know if it was a unusual parade thing or what, but people became more excited, so it kind of grabbed my attention. Um, then I realized something wasn't quite right. Um, I could see a vehicle um, traveling from the east to the west. Um, at first, I could only see the top portion of the vehicle from maybe the um, windshield up because there was people obviously standing along, along the route, so they kind of obstructed my view. Um, but I could see that the vehicle was traveling at a much faster rate than any of the other participants, so clearly something was wrong. Could you describe the vehicle for us? Um, at first, I could only tell that it was an probably like an SUV because of, again, my vision was obstructed by the people that were standing watching the parade. Um, as I got closer, uh, I could see that it was a uh, red Ford Escape SUV. What happened as the SUV got closer to you? As it got closer to me, um, I could hear that the engine was revving very high. The RPMs were much higher than normal, almost like it was um, maybe in the wrong gear or there was something mechanically wrong with it. It was revving, like I said, revving much higher than a typical car. It definitely grabbed your attention. Okay, what happened next? Um, as I got closer, I could hear something, which I didn't know if it was like the engine sputtering or I didn't really know what it was. Um, again, kind of unusual. Um, but then as it got closer, um, you could see that it was, again, traveling at a high rate of speed. I was concerned at that point in time um, that either there's some sort of mechanical issue with the car possibly, or maybe some parade participant was having a medical emergency, but the, clip, the vehicle was clearly not under control in relation to everything else that was going on. How close did the SUV get to you? As it passed me, it came uh, more towards my side of the street, so it would have been traveling essentially um, west in what would be the eastbound lanes normally. Um, so when it passed by me, it was very close, probably maybe 10 feet away at most. Were there parking spaces in front of you where you were standing? I, be I believe there were, yes. Do you recall if the vehicle passed through the parking spaces in front of you at all? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. Yes. Could you describe the lighting conditions at that time? What were the 
the sunlight, street lights, things like that? Um, it was, if I remember correctly, it was getting to be towards dusk. Um, I don't believe the street lights, lights were on at that point in time, but it was, it was getting darker, but it was still, um, like I said, I would describe it as maybe dusk slightly before that. How good of a look did you get at the driver? A very good look. Okay. Can you describe, or did you, can you give us a physical description of what you remember? I remember the driver being uh, a light-skinned male black, approximately 30, mid-30s, mid to late 30s. Um, had very facial hair and um, what I would describe as like dreadlocks. Longer hair, longer hair. What was the driver doing as he passed you? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Uh, as he was driving by, he uh, the window was open. He stuck his head and actually like the upper portion of his body out the driver's window and looked back behind him. The window you're talking about, which window is that? It would be the driver's window. And he actually stuck his head out the window. Objection, leave the window. Overruled, he may answer. Correct, uh, to the point where I briefly, it crossed my mind, he actually may fall out. That's how far out I perceived him to be. Where was the, what direction was the driver looking when he stuck his head out the window? He was looking behind him. From the direction that he had come from? Correct, correct. What happened next? Um, at that point when he, when he looked back and then he kind of turned towards the front, uh, based on his body language, um, my heart kind of sank because I felt like what I thought could be maybe a medical emergency or something like that. To me, it clearly, uh, I felt like it was an intentional act, so that obviously upset me a little bit. And um, then the driver, after he had leaned back, he turned forward, he grabbed the steering wheel, he pulled himself up off the seat and cranked the steering wheel to the right. So let the record reflect that the witness used both hands <coughs> at the 10 and 2 position to simulate the driver's hands on the steering wheel. Objection to that. Um, overrule, the record will reflect. <coughs> what happened as the driver cranked the steering wheel to the right? Unfortunately, when he did that, he essentially steered the vehicle across the parade route at a diagonal angle directly through um, a group of people that were walking with the Catholic, sorry, the uh, Catholic community of Waukesha. Based on your memory of where those people were in the road and the SUV's path of travel, what would have happened if the SUV had simply maintained a straight path instead of veering to the right? Objection, speculative. Um, overruled, he may answer. I believe that there was a gap between where the Catholic community from Waukesha was standing and the, the parade um, spectators. So there should have been an open alleyway if he would have went straight. What happened next? Uh, when he, well, unfortunately, when he drove through that group, um, he struck many of them, a lot of them kind of bouncing off the hood and um, some of them unfortunately actually ran over. I could see them kind of people come out from underneath the vehicle. Did you see the vehicle at any point attempt to strike the word attempt? Did you at any point see the vehicle slow down? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. No, not at all. Did you see brake lights? Nope. None. Did you hear a horn honking? Nope, not at all. Okay, let's play this once then. Why was he playing so fast? <coughs> Is that normal speed? Um, Mr. Brooks, it's not your time to ask questions. You'll have an opportunity to ask those uh, previously, or er, uh, when. We go back to the six second mark. Objection. What's the relevancy of keep going back? 
I presume you have a question for the witness. I do. Yep. All right. Overall. Can you, uh, using a small, a little X again, can you draw on the screen the approximate area where you would have been standing at this time? Sure. I would have been somewhere down in that area. Okay. So the sidewalk running kind of up the middle of the screen here, that'll run into Maple? Yes. And then you would be on the other side of Maple? Yes. Yeah. Um, overruled, his answer may stand. Just caution the state about leading questions. Thank you. Do you know what side of the street this camera is on, north or south? This yes, uh, overruled, yes, if he knew. This camera would be on the south side of Main Street. And what direction is the camera facing? This <coughs> camera will be facing to the west. Okay. And can we back up a little bit, maybe to the three second mark? Okay, we're at the three second mark. Do you see the SUV that you've been talking about in the video right now? Objection, lead the witness. Overruled. Yes. Can you please circle it for us? What did you see the, the taillights of the SUV doing in the last few seconds of that video? Objection, what's the relevancy? Um, overall, he may answer. I didn't see the taillights on as far as like brake lights. I didn't see any brake lights. But the uh, <coughs> the rear facing lights were illuminated in some way, correct? Objection, the witness. Sustained. Please. Tail lights, not brake lights. <coughs> oh, please rephrase. Sure. Did you see any lights on the back of the vehicle? Yes. Which ones? Tail lights. And what did you see the taillights doing in that portion of the video? Objection, the witness. Overruled. The taillights were on. But the position of the vehicle, did you see that change? Objection, the witness. Overruled. I did not. That's good. We played six seconds. Do you recognize that video? Do I recognize the vehicle in the video? Yes. Yes. Objection, that wasn't the question, Your Honor. Um, overruled, he may answer. The answer was yes? Yes. Okay. You testified earlier that the driver's window was down when it passed you, is that correct? Yes. Does this video accurately depict uh, how the SUV looked, including that window, at the time you saw it? Objection. Speculative. The window was open. Um, overruled, he may answer. He's testifying about what he recalled, not what someone else thought. Go ahead. Yes. I move exhibit 134 into evidence and request permission to publish. Objection. You're safe. The objections overruled. Exhibit 134 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Okay. We'll play this once at full speed. The video that we just played, Exhibit 134, that's how you recall seeing the video that day, the vehicle that day? Yes. Does that come up in the third box yet? further questions. Any questions for this witness, sir? Yeah. That's a yes? Yes. All right, go ahead. Uh, are you 
Would you happen to be on duty today, right now, if you weren't testifying? Yes. And so right now, you would, would it be fair to say that you are on the clock? Yes. So on the clock, would, would it be fair to say that you're getting paid right now? Yes. Would that be uh, for your testimony or just because you would be on the clock otherwise? These would be my normal work hours right now. So you're being paid to testify right now as we speak? Objection. Grounds. Asked to answer. Grounds. Um, he may answer. Yes. Any idea why you would be getting paid to testify? Because these are my normal work hours. This is when I'm working and I've been subpoenaed by the state to be here. So the state's paying you to testify? The city of Franklin is paying me. To testify? These are my normal work hours. So testifying in uh, open court is uh, part of your duties as an officer? Yes. So you've done this more than just this time then, that, would that be fair to say? Yes. And each time you were paid to do so? Yes. You, you may mention to the state of Wisconsin, um, <coughs> is that who you were subpoenaed by? Yes. Do you recall by whom? No. You, you were in fact subpoenaed though, would that be fair to say? Yes. And you don't recall by whom the subpoena was delivered to you? Did the name on the subpoena? No. <coughs> so would it be fair to say that upon being subpoenaed, you, you were in touch with the state of Wisconsin? Specifically, Waukesha County DA's office. Do you recall who those interactions were with? Not specifically. So it would be fair to say you, you had an interaction with the uh, <coughs> Waukesha County District Attorney's Office but don't recall who you spoke with? I spoke with a group of people from the DA's office. Do you remember <coughs> anyone by name? One, one of the people was the, um, the gentleman. A DA at the table. That the record reflect that uh, the witness made a hand gesture towards the prosecution table and identified attorney which out. Objection. The record will so reflect. So you knew that it, it was a strong possibility that you would be called to testify then I'm assuming. That be fair to say? Yes. Did you uh, seek to testify in any way? I don't understand the question. Were you were you actively seeking to testify? Like, did you on your end did you reach out and volunteer testimony? After the incident, I did complete a report of what I saw that day, and gave it to the Waukesha uh, Police Department. So after after that uh, report that you submitted, um, you didn't follow up on. What was happening in, in, in uh, the matter at, at that point? No. So it'd be fair to say uh, after you gave the report on the incident, you just went back to work and continued your normal duties. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Did you follow much in the aftermath of the, the matter at that point after you submitted your report? Not really. Well, let me back up. Was today the first time you ever saw those uh, exhibits, the videos and steel frame photo? No. So you've seen that before today? Yes. You recall how many times? I believe probably once, once a piece. Um, do you recall who you were shown them by? The, um, the, the, the same table, yeah. Same attorney? Yes. Let the record also reflect that, again, he's 
made a right hand gesture to the prosecution table and identified as attorney with child again. No objection. Record will still reflect. And um, exhibit, I want to say it was 133, or maybe 132. You recall seeing the uh, vehicle that you saw that day going through the parade route. Would that be fair to say? Could I see the exhibit? I'm not sure which one specifically you're referring to. Uh, let's let's try exhibit 132, and then maybe. Would the state put that up, please. Yep. For the witness only, or for everyone? For everyone. All right, go ahead. Uh, I don't have it on my screen. It takes a moment. Okay, you should have good. it now. Let me, jurors, yes. let me know when you have it in the jury box. I, I have it, I have it now. No, I need the jurors to let me know when they get it since there's a more of a delay to the jury box and those monitors. Um, you may reference when when shown this exhibit you may reference to be to be in position around like right in that area would that be fair to say yes if you could play the video from i don't know maybe starting at f around five seconds give me a second i need to clear the annotation you don't want to catch it anyway do you oh no not good. all right Can you, can you play it? Did you see the vehicle pass the position where you were standing in that exhibit? Yes. You made reference to the driver of the vehicle hanging out of the driver's side window. And I think your words were... You, you you were concerned that the driver may fall out of the vehicle. Do you recall saying that? Yes. Is it fair to say from that exhibit video that the driver of that vehicle is not hanging out of the window? In that portion of the video, he is not hanging out the window. So what, so what portion, let me back up. In any of the exhibits that you were shown, does any of them depict the driver hanging out of the window on the verge of falling out. No. Do you know of any reason why the the exhibits are not depicting what you say you saw? That portion of the video only co covers from a distance where I was. It would have been the very tail end of that when it's going to the west. That video is probably from several hundred feet to the east of where I am. So Several hundred feet? How, how would you estimate that distance? Just, a, I know where that video was taken from and where I was standing. That's, that's an estimate of about how far. And you know that for sure? It's an estimate. So it would be fair to say you don't know for sure. Objection. Grounds. Sustain. Grounds for sustain, Your Honor? Argumentative, sustained as to the form of the question. Please rephrase it. Would it be fair to say that in the exhibit that was just shown, that from the position that you said that you would have been positioned at, would it be fair to say that the vehicle passed that position pretty quickly? Yes. So how were you able to get a look at the driver if it passed your position quickly and we can see lots of people standing in that position? When the vehicle passed by me, it was, the vehicle at that point in time was a threat to me and my family. So I was very focused on what was going on, very focused. And it passed directly in front of me, about 10 feet away. So all my attention was directly on that vehicle. That's how I noticed that. And you saying it passed 10 feet, 10 feet in front of you? Approximately, yes. Does this uh, 
exhibit that was just shown depict what you are saying now that it passed 10 feet in front of you yes so can we pull that back up sure will be shown to everyone yes and if the jurors would let me know when it's on the screens in the jury box please Go ahead. You want it played? They, they have it. Yeah, they confirm. Do you uh, want it played from a certain well, spot? I, I'll get to that. Just so we're clear for the record and for the jury, your position would be somewhere in here as you testify. Would that be fair to say? Correct. But can we put an X down? Hold on. He was oh. let him finish. He was interrupting. Okay. Okay. Given, given the angle of this. It's very hard for me to show precisely where I am. It's a little, it's, if I can draw an X, I'm trying to draw it as far, to use your finger. I'm sorry. That's okay. Like as far down here as possible. It, it's not right, it's not like any of these people here. It's actually, because this, this is still, all this video here is still on the east side of Maple. I am on the west side of Maple. So when I put an X here, I am essentially, I'm going to call it way down there, several hundred feet. I'm not any of these people pictured. Does that make sense? Um, no, it actually doesn't, but I was referring, so I probably had it a little coming this way. So by what you're saying, you would have been approximately in this area. Would that be fair to say? Uh, yeah. Object to the annotation. The witness drew twice now where he was, and I think adequately explained it. Ground. Um, I'm going to sustain the objection and uh, direct Mr. Brooks to have the witness put where the area that he was in. Okay. So we'll clear the annotation and go ahead. If you could do that, sir. <coughs> yeah, it would be. Now, did you mean to put that arrow? I did not mean to put that arrow there. <laughs> Let's clear it again. We'll have you do it. I know it's a touchy screen, so do it again. So you and your family were approximately in the area of where you drew the X. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Would it be also be fair to say that there are quite a few people in that area? Yes. Would it be fair to say that you can see, I guess it would be some type of lights from the vehicle that passed? Would that be fair to say? Yes. And you estimate that where you can see those lights and where you would have positioned that is 10 feet. Can you re repeat the question? Would you say that where you can see those lights at, that, we, that you just said that you can see, and the position that you drew yourself to be positioned in, you would estimate that that's 10 feet? Yes. Well, I'll object and move to strike. I think this is a misleading question. We're at the beginning of the video. Those taillights are not the vehicle in question. Where did the taillights come from then? Um, a different vehicle. Oh. So would it be fair to say that they Hold on, there's been an objection. There's been an objection. I believe the question mischaracterized the evidence. So strike the question, strike his response. Please rephrase. If you want to watch the video again to establish what you're asking, that would be fine. Before I play, do you recall there being any other vehicles? positioned by where you were standing at with your family. Hold on, are you talking about at the time that we're seeing at, this? At, or at the time that, that we're looking at right now, do you recall any other vehicles being present, positioned where you were standing with your family? I believe there was a vehicle to my left, which would have been, immediately to my left was the group that was walking with the Catholic community of Waukesha. And just to the west of them was some sort of 
vehicle that was participating in the parade. So it had been a little bit further west? Yes. From, from your recollection, would you say that that was the vehicle that you said would have been positioned a little further west? Sir, do you mean the vehicle in the photo? In yes, the, the vehicle that... Thank you. The vehicle in the exhibit. I'm sorry. That's okay. I just want to make sure that we all understand. Okay. It's possible that's the vehicle. But you don't know for sure? No. Can you uh, play a little bit of it? I I'll tell you when to pause. Can we bring the X off? We can. And we will. <coughs> Go ahead and play. Pause. Would it be fair to say that it looks like the vehicle that's traveling with, with direction, would that be west? Which, which vehicle are you referring to? Uh, the, the, the vehicle that just drove through the middle of the screen. Yes. For would it record, be fair? Hold on. For the record, your the video was paused at four seconds. Go ahead. Does the vehicle appear to be in the middle of the street? Would that be fair to say? At that point, yes. Can we pull up uh, Exhibit 9? Go ahead. Uh, can we... How do you show it to everybody? Do you say publish? Yeah, it's not <laughs> I'm sorry. Publish, yes. It may... It is. Jerry will let me know when it's in the jury box, please. Would it be fair to say from this still shot depiction that there are in fact tinted windows of the vehicle that you identified? It does appear that the windows in the back are tinted. So you don't see any tinted windows on the side too? Yes, when I mean back, I mean driver's door back. I, so, I, so, I apologize, I, I didn't know what you meant by that. Okay. Back driver's side window and the window the media window after that as well. Would it be fair to say that there, from this picture, there are two tinted windows that you can visibly see? Would that be fair to say? Yes. You can take that down. Were you injured in any way during the incident? No. Any of your family? No. Do you know if anyone uh, filed a claim in this incident? I don't, don't understand the question. Um, filed a claim like a... Uh, seeking to be an injured party. Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Lur uh, working in law enforcement, um, have you at any point seen uh, the complaint in this matter? Objection. Grounds. 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 Over rule team may answer if he's in. <clears throat> A complaint regarding this case? Yes. No. Do you know if there's a plaintiff in this case? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Plaintiff in the case? I sustain the objection. Okay, thank you. You don't have to answer. All right. Do you even know if there's a plaintiff in this matter? Same objection. Grounds. Sustained. Being in law enforcement for as long as you have, are you aware that there has to be a, an injured party to bring a claim? Objection, Grounds. argumentative. Sustained. Also misstates the law. In any of your uh, investigations dur during your career, were you ever made aware at any time that the state of Wisconsin can be a plaintiff in a matter. Objection, relevance. Sustained. And from your recollection, do you recall seeing any of the occupants in the vehicle at, at the time? I don't remember seeing anyone in the vehicle other than the driver. 
Were you able to get a look inside of the vehicle? I could only see the driver. I couldn't tell you whether there was anyone else in the vehicle or not. So it would be fair to say that you're not sure? That would be fair. No further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? Yes, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, if we could bring 132 back up for the jury, and while we're waiting for their screens to come up, I do have some separate questions. Go ahead. Uh, you testified that you're getting paid today as you sit there, correct? That is correct. By the city of Franklin? Yes. Okay. State of Wisconsin is not cutting that check. The objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Objection. Okay. Speculative. Um, overruled. You may answer. <coughs> Correct. It's just the city of Franklin's paying no one else. Do you get paid more money if there's a guilty verdict? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. It's not hearsay. You may answer. No. Okay. Direct your attention to Exhibit 132 on the screen. Uh, if we could jump ahead to maybe three seconds and slow it down to about 40%. One last time, I'd like you to draw an X to depict where you and your family were standing, approximately. Objection. Uh, answered numerous times already at this point. I'd like to preserve this as an exhibit. Go ahead. He's done it so many times. Can we save that as Exhibit 132A and I move that into evidence? Objection. Relevancy. It answered numerous times. Exhibit 132 is received. 132A. Sorry, 132A. Thank you. Objection. Overruled. We can see the red SUV uh, in the roadway on Main Street in this portion of the video. Is that right? Yes. Okay. At this point in the video, can you see the driver leaning his head or body out of the driver's window? No. Let's go frame by frame, please. pause there. We've paused at about four seconds. This is the approximate location uh, on cross-examination where you were asked about your position and whether or not you were 10 feet from the vehicle. Do you remember that line of questioning? Yes. When the vehicle was 10 feet away from you, is this where it was on Main Street? Objection. Overall, you may answer. Speculative. It's clearly not 10 feet. It would the juror will disregard the comment made by Mr. Brooks. Um, it's not testimony. The witness may answer. I don't consent to being called that name. Objection to that, for the record. Could you repeat the question one more time, please? When the vehicle was 10 feet away from you, is this, as it's depicted right now in the video, is this where the vehicle was at that time? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Grounds for the overrule, Your Honor. He may answer. The vehicle at this point would still be east of my location. Okay. So it hasn't, at this point in the video, it hasn't reached you and your family yet. That is correct. Let's go frame by frame a few more frames, please. And we'll pause there. Just for the record, it was not paused when you asked it to, so go ahead and get back to the spot. It should be at four. So looks like the video is at four seconds. Yep, we'll play from there. Um, and if you could just indicate, hold on, oh, what, what speed you're at. We're going frame by frame at this point. Thank you. A 
Okay, we've paused at uh, five seconds. Is the vehicle now closer to the approximate location where it was near you and your family? Objection, yeah. hearsay. Overruled. Yes. You described this video camera as being several hundred feet away from your location, is that right? Approximately. In your opinion, if the driver's body were hanging out the window at this point in the video, could we see it on the video? In my opinion, no. Okay. There was a question on cross-examination about uh, your use of the phrase open alleyway. So just to clarify, what, if anything, was between the group of the Catholic group and the south curb of Main Street as the SUV drove through that area? Objection leading. Overruled. I believe that there was nothing in that space. It would be an open space. And you testified that you saw the SUV veer from left to right. Is that correct? Objection. Speaking to you. Overruled. You may answer. That is correct. Your initial opinion that there may have been a mechanical problem, that changed at some point, didn't it? Objection. Yes. Speckly to you. Overruled. Yes. Why, why did that opinion change? Objection leading. Um, overruled. He may answer. It changed when I saw the driver and his body language. What was that body language? What did you see? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. I would describe him as being in an excited state, um, not in a state of panic. More, again, excited or almost happy about what was going on, not panicked or scared. Well, I have, thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you, sir. You may step down. Statement calls next witness. State calls Ralph Salyers. You've seen uh, news reports about this case in the days or the time since November 21st, is that right? Yes. And you've seen photographs of Daryl Brooks in, in other contexts, is that correct? Objection. Yes. I do not consent to being called that name, nor do I know that individual. And his, my name is Daryl Brooks Jr. Go ahead, you may answer the question. Speculative. It's not speculative. Clearly. Yes. The person you saw get out of the driver's seat of that SUV on November 21st, do you see that person in the courtroom today? The yes. Objection is hearsay. How he's speaking as a uh, first I am witness. Um, overruled. <clears throat> I believe he answered, but could you state it again? Yes, I see him. He's sitting at the defense table wearing a suit with a blue tie and a white surgical mask. And just to be thorough, uh, could we please have Mr. Brooks remove his mask for a moment? Please. Mr. Brooks, please remove your mask. Thank you. The record should reflect the mask has been removed. How confident are you in your identification today? 100%. Is your identification in court today colored in any way by seeing pictures of Mr. Brooks uh, in other contexts? Objection speculative. Um, overruled. He may answer. No. Can you describe the difference, if any, between Mr. Brooks's appearance today and his appearance on November 21st? Objection, hearsay, and speculative. Um, it's neither one of those things. The objection is overruled. The witness may answer. Objection is irrelevant. It is relevant. He may answer. Not if he identified me already, so he said. Mr. Brooks, please. The objection's been overruled. <coughs> the witness may answer. He's got very short hair right now, and he didn't then. What does it look like on November 21st? Objection. Overruled, you may answer. Relevancy. Go ahead, you may answer, sir. Had longer hair. Is that an accurate depiction of that scene as you saw it that day? Objection. Yes. Overruled. Yeah. Move, move exhibit? Answer. Yes. Thank you. Move exhibit 65 into evidence and ask to publish. Exhibit 65 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Objection. Relevancy. 
the world. This is 36 seconds. Uh, let's play it through one time at 100% speed, please. Back to the beginning and pause it at the beginning there. Do you see yourself at the beginning of this video? Yes. Can you circle yourself for us? That's a touch screen, just use your finger. Thank you. We can clear that. You're the only person walking a dog in this video, is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's play and we'll pause it at another point. We'll pause there at four seconds. Uh, you mentioned prospect. Can you draw a line down prospect for us? Okay, so that's the only cross street we can see clearly in the video. Correct? Yes. And do you see any vehicles on prospect at this point? I see two. Could you uh, circle the yeah. one with... Clearly more than two vehicles. On prospect. I'll, clear, I'll clarify. No, you said on prospect. He answered. His answer may stand. <coughs> where's Where's prospect? Where, where are you? Find he already it? drew a line. The witness would redraw the line for Mr. Brooks. Thank you. Go ahead. Do either of those vehicles have appearing to you today to have an inoperable headlight? Yes. Which one? If you could circle it, please. The it's leading. It's not leading. He may answer. Thank you. We can clear that. And we'll resume at four seconds, please. Pause. Pause to 27 seconds. Do you see on the video right now the person you recall being the driver of that vehicle? Yes. Could you please circle that person for us? I'd like to mark and preserve this annotation as Exhibit 65A, please, and move it into evidence. Objection. You're saying. The objection is overruled. Exhibit 65A is received. Go ahead. Yes, please. The clothing worn by the person you just circled, does that match your memory of what the driver was wearing that day? Yes. Okay. And let's play from this point, 27 seconds. And we'll stop there. From the 27 second point to the end of the video, the person who you circled does that match your memory of what the driver did that day after he got out of the SUV? Yes. What did you do next? I attempted to call 911 to report a crash. If we could take the video down, please. Did you get through on the first call? No. What about the second? No. Third? No. Did you eventually get through? Fourth I'm time. Here, say. I'm sorry, I didn't um, hear the answer. Um, the objection is overruled. Could you please restate your answer, sir? I believe I got through on the fourth attempt. That's all I have. Thank you. Any questions on cross-exam for this witness? I do. Uh, can we pull that uh, exhibit back up again? 65. And, and publish. 65 will be shown. Go ahead. And publish. Granted. Permission granted to publish. It's been received. Let me know, jurors, when 65 is in the jury box. It's up. Okay. <coughs>
Okay, why does this why does this pause right now? It is not playing to set zero. Would it be fair to say that to the I guess that would be my right of the screen, you can see a white looking SUV by the by the walkway where people would be able to cross the street. Is that be fair to say? Yes. And would it be fair to say that the side street that you lined as being prospect, I think you said it was, where the two do not enter signs are, that would be the side street you're referring to? Would that be fair to say? Yes. Would it be fair to say that from the position that you're in, approximately here, and the side street being here, and just so the record is clear, Mr. Brooks has annotated the uh, touch screen with a line uh, depicting the direction of prospect uh, intersecting with the street, the perpendicular street. I apologize, I don't remember the name. And then an X where prospect, you see. Prospect is the street uh, in the direction of the line, but there's a cross street there. Okay. But the X is uh, indicating where uh, this witness his dog and his daughter were are in the video. Go ahead. So from where you're positioned right here by the X, you can see down this street from the position you're in. No. So how were you able to see if a vehicle would be coming from this way from the position you're at? I didn't see the vehicle driving on prospect. I saw it driving behind the houses through the yards. So you were able to see the vehicle behind houses? Between houses, behind You said houses. behind. You said behind. Right, through the yards, behind the houses. And you were able to see that from where you were? Yes. Can we take those marked lines and step down? Can you play it a little bit? I'll tell you when to pause. You just confirm you want full speed? Uh, yeah, what, I guess that would be regular speed. Whatever is the regular speed. Yes, please. I'm sorry about that. Go ahead. Would it be fair to say from... Do you want to pause? Uh, no, not yet. Just You, you can let it play. I, I'll say... I think it's 36 seconds, so... Would it be fair to say from... Well, hold on, the video's showing, so wait till it's done playing and then ask a question. Or have us pause where you want it paused. Pause. So let's pause that 18 seconds for the record. Would it be fair to say that in the 18 seconds shown to this point, you're pretty much just walking the dog, moving around, just walking normal. You, you don't make any sudden moves to the left to look, or you don't stop in your tracks or anything. You're just walking along. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And you also made reference to hearing a crash. What point did you hear the crash? Sometime while a vehicle was driving behind the houses. Why didn't you immediately stop and stop in your tracks and say you just heard something? Why do you just keep moving as if you heard anything? Nothing. I just turned my head to see if I could see anything and I didn't see anything. And so you just kept moving? Correct. So basically it was just like, oh, do 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 walking the dog. Yes. Can you play the rest of the video? We sure can. Go ahead. It did a weird little like motion thing. That was probably from the camera I, I, I would this. But in that entire in that entire video, is it fair to say that you did not reach for a phone and take out a phone from your pockets or anything in any way? That I, can't, be fair to say? I, can't, I, I can't tell if I did from the video itself. I know. So when I did you make the call? At some point after you started running. Who is you? The defendant, the driver of the vehicle. So how, how long after you saw the driver of the vehicle did you make the 911 call? Within seconds, I believe. Is it fair to say that we don't see that on the video? 
the video is very small at that point. It's hard to Is see. it fair to say we don't see you do that on the video? Yes. Can we pull the video back up? Can you take it to 27 seconds and pause at 27? Maybe, maybe 28, I'm, I may be mistaken. Maybe just go one more second, maybe to 28. Or, you know what, no. Keep your pause right there. Would it be fair to say that you noticed the vehicle in this area right there? Yes. Can you remove the X? And... What do you see right there? I'm not, I don't understand. Do you see anything right there? An individual, uh, anything, do you see anything right there? It's Inside hard to the tell circle? from that picture what I can see. Can you move it, can we blow it up a little bit or move it closer? Just a little bit? I don't know that it can be zoomed in. Does that can state it, have that capability? In? So we can zoom in as long as the defense okay with dispensing with any technological foundation issues there. But we can zoom in. We have the ability to do that. Do we, would you like it zoomed in? What, what do you mean by not say that again? I'm sorry. We can zoom in if you want to. Can you zoom in just a little bit? Just, just a smidge. That's the extent of our zooming capabilities okay. with this. No, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Can you see anything there? It looks like something white. I don't know if that's the driver. Looks like something white. Yes, it's light colored. White color what? It's light colored. Light colored, but you did say white. Is that fair to say that you just said white? I just did say white. Can we erase the circle? Zoom back out, take the, it's a, like a box there in the corner that's kind of throwing the whole exhibit off. Take it back to the regular. You testified earlier that you saw the driver uh, with a gray hoodie as you referred to it. Do you recall saying that? Yes. Would, would I just circle right there? Would you, from your recollection, say that that was the driver you saw? I don't know what that is at this point. You don't, it's you just don't a know? paused video. It could be a glare. It could be a person. I don't know. It. You could play it again. Well, let's play it again. From the 27 mark? Stop right there. Okay. Yeah, no. from, from the 27 mark. The, I think it just played maybe, what, a second, half a second or something like that? Did you see... That whatever you said you didn't know what it was, could have been a person, could have been something else. Did you see it move from the position that it was before? Yes. And you also identified that that was white, right? That's what you said, correct? I did say that. And would it be fair to say that you saw the driver in gray? Would that be fair to say? Yes. Take the circle off. You also stated that you were about 50 feet from the vehicle. Well, you added the vehicle in until you said maybe 50 feet and then depending on the length of the vehicle. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And from where, from where you are here to here, because it would be fair to say we can't see a vehicle and the picture at that point, would that be fair to say? We can't see a vehicle that would be facing you because you said it was facing you. We can't see a vehicle, would that be fair to say? From the angle of vehicles obstructed, yes. So that would be 50 feet from, approximately 50 feet from X to X? Approximately. And you were able to see the driver 
and a description from where you from where you're standing now to where the other X is. Yes. And you were able to make out the race of the driver from where you were at. I guessed. You guessed. Raced. So you're not you're not for sh for certain. I wasn't for certain for certain at that time. And you made reference to the driver's hair. Would that be fair to say? In my testimony, yes. You you brought up the hair is what I'm saying. You, you said long hair. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And you will be able to see hair if you describe the driver wearing a hoodie? Yes. You will be able to see hair and tell the length of the hair. If it's hanging out of the hoodie, yes. Well, you didn't You didn't say, all fairness, you didn't say it was hanging out of the hoodie. You just referred to the hair. Yes. Is it? Hold on. There's been an objection. I believe the witness understood the question, so I'll overrule the objection. His answer may stand. Next question. Is it any possible way you could have gotten a description from the news reports instead of what you actually recall? No. Do you recall any of them asking you a, a, a description of what you saw? I didn't speak to any officers on scene that day. Any reason why not? I seeing, just left. Seeing as how, seeing as how that you made the initial 911 call, I, I'm sure the officers were probably responding by that time anyway, but seeing as how you made the 911 call, you didn't collaborate with the other officers to try to you know, like piece together what you may have so. I'll object to the characterization that that was the first 911 call. I didn't, I didn't say first, I said he made the initial 911 call. Initial means first, so sustained as to the form of the question. No further questions. Any redirect? Yes, please, thank you. You testify that you didn't investigate the sound of this crash, correct? Yes. Were you off duty that day? Yes. When you're off duty, do you carry a police radio with you? Objection. That, that is uh, irrelevant. It's an officer of the law. Overruled. He may answer. No. So you, if you did get into a pickle, you wouldn't be able to call for backup, would you? Objection. That speculative still has a cell phone. It's not speculative. He may answer the question. Correct. Uh, your daughter, the one that we saw in Exhibit 65, I believe, 65. Um, is she a sworn law enforcement officer? Objection. Irrelevant. Overruled. You may answer. No. At the time you heard the crash but didn't investigate it, did you know that the vehicle that you saw had been involved in hitting dozens of people on Main Street Obje minutes earlier? Objection. Uh, acts during cross. Answer. Overruled. He may answer. I had no idea. When the driver got out, and just to clarify again, who, who was the driver? The defendant. Daryl Brooks? Daryl Brooks. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. And Mr. Brooks, I'm sorry. I don't consent to being called that name. Uh, my name is Daryl Brooks, Jr. So noted. Next question, please. Did you see anybody else get out of the vehicle? No. When you went back to check the vehicle, was there anybody inside? No. Um, on this issue of the white clothing, can we please show for everybody uh, exhibit number 120, which has previously been published? Go ahead. You see exhibit number 120 on the screen in front of you? Yes. You see the person who appears to be behind the driver's wheel of the red SUV in that picture? Objection. What is the relevancy? Overruled. He may answer. Yes. How would you describe the color of the shirt that that person's wearing? Light gray or white. That's all I have for this witness. All right, thank you. You may step down. Uh, may this witness be excused from this 
he may. All right, I am going to excuse the jurors for a, and actually take a recess. It's a little bit later, but we'll take our mid for late morning break at this point, about 15 minutes or so. All rise for the jury, please. All right, we are in recess. Please be back in 15 minutes. Thank you. You may be seated. There's no history on them because they're all blacked out. But when I click like that, it'll take oh, me right. to the amendment. But the Wisconsin one is for 1975, it's 200 pages long. I've been digging through it. Yeah, okay. All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, we'll have the jury brought out and uh, the state may call its next witness when the jury is out here. Go ahead. Your objections noted for the record. I, I don't believe the audio is on. Your objection is noted for the record. I addressed that yesterday. I will not be addressing it again. Was I at least heard for the record? Because you just stated that the audio wasn't on. I heard it. Did the record hear it? Yes. So you heard me say the subject matter jurisdiction hasn't been verified or proved yet? All right. And the state may call its next witness. State calls officer Bryce Skolton. What about back in November of 2021? What was your assignment back then? I was a police officer. <laughs> Were you working as a police officer on November 21st of 2021? Yes, I was. Were you assigned to work at the Waukesha Christmas Parade? Yes, I was. Do you recall where you were posted during the parade? My assignment was traffic control at the intersection of Northwest Avenue and Wisconsin Avenue. Will you please put up for the jury exhibit number one, which has previously been published? Go ahead. Could you circle for us the intersection where you were posted uh, yes. on this map? Actually, it's a touch. Use your finger. Just use your finger. <laughs> I may want to take that away. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so you've circled the intersection of West Main Street and Wisconsin <coughs> Avenue, correct? Correct. What does the purple line on that map depict? The purple line is the uh, parade route for the Christmas parade. But then uh, what happens to the purple line at Maine and Wisconsin? Uh, that is where the line stops. That is, I believe, where the vehicle left the parade route. Exhibit 1 back up, please. As you're putting Exhibit 1 back up, I just want to make a record of the hand gesture he made previously when testifying about, uh, I believe it was his radio microphone. He used his right hand, I would say about heart height, to indicate his, I believe he called it a lapel mic or uh, something to do with his radio and where he would hear from. Go ahead. Um, objection. I don't think he said lapel. I think he was just. I think he referred to the microphone just being here and not using the earpiece. That's just. Um, your objection you. is noted. The state can seek clarification, okay. but the fact um, I did my best to describe uh, the action of the officer on the stand. Go ahead. Using cardinal directions, can you describe for us which side of you the SUV passed? Objection, please, Cardinal. 
um, overruled, think? the witness may answer. The vehicle passed uh, to the east of me. What direction were you facing as it first started to pass you? I was facing north. So that would have been on your, the vehicle would have passed you on your right? Correct. Did you get a good look at the driver? Yes, I did. Do you see the driver in the courtroom today? Yes, I do. Your Honor, I'd ask Mr. Brooks, please remove his mask for a moment. Thank you for doing that, Mr. Brooks. His mask is off. Can you identify the driver in the courtroom if you see him? Yes, the driver is seated at the defense wearing a blue tie and blue shirt underneath his suit jacket. And does the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant? The record will reflect the witness has identified the defendant as the driver of the <coughs> vehicle he saw on November 21. We've played seven seconds for you. Do you recognize this video? Yes, I do. What does it show? This is the vehicle that was driven by Daryl Brooks on, uh, during the Christmas parade that drove past me and I shot at. Objection. Um, I don't consent to or be uh, called that name, or, nor do I identify it. I'm here in third party. Uh, my name is Daryl Brooks, Jr. So Your objection is noted. Me. It's overruled. The witness has previously identified you. Go that ahead. stated for the record. Let me ask you a question. Does this video accurately depict the scene as you saw it that day? Yes, it does. Do you recognize this photograph? Yes, I do. What does it show? This shows the vehicle damage that I observed when I first saw the vehicle as it was coming towards me. This is the vehicle that was, again, driven the Christmas parade by <coughs> Daryl Brooks. Objection, I don't consent to being called that name again for the record <coughs> I'm here in third party. The for objection the it's on the record. Does this appear to be a screenshot from the video we just watched, Exhibit 57? It does appear so. And again, this is then an accurate depiction of how the vehicle looked that day? That is correct. I move Exhibit 170 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Well, let me see. Overruled. Exhibit 170 is received. Permission uh, to publish is granted. I would remind the jury once again that um, comments made by parties and lawyers um, are not evidence and should thus not be considered as such. Now I'd like to show for the witness only exhibit number 169, please. Go ahead. Do you recognize this photograph? Yes, I do. What is it? This is that same vehicle. Uh, it appears to be just moments after that first picture we just were shown. Does this appear to be a screenshot from the video in exhibit 57? Yes, it does. Is this an accurate depiction of how the vehicle and the driver looked to you that day? Yes. Move exhibit 169 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Exhibit 169 is received. Permission to publish is granted. <coughs> Objection. Noted. Overruled. Now I'd like to show for the witness only, please. Hold on. Was that in the jury box? Okay, it was there. Thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that earlier. All right, so next exhibit you may show to the witness. Exhibit 58, please. Any questions for this witness, sir? I do. Um, you stated uh, initially that you had heard uh, some radio calls about a... a possible uh, altercation at Frank Park? That is correct. Do you know if any investigation was done uh, looking into that supposed fight at the park? <coughs> yes. And what did you learn? I did not learn anything of it. I just know that squads were responding there to investigate it. I was not updated on their findings or 
what they had investigated. I just know that they were dispatched there for that investigation. Do you recall if there was ever a knife recovered or uh, a suspect recovered in that supposed incident? Do you mean like how much later do I know? Like what I know at, now? At any time, at any time. Do you know if, if there was a, a suspect, I guess I would say, apprehended or anything that was found with a knife, to your knowledge? To my knowledge, I do not know if the suspect from that incident, which was you, uh, was located you, you with a knife. You say you, what do you mean? You, Daryl Brooks. Mean? I know you were the suspect in that incident, and I know you were... Um, taken into custody approximately 30 to 40 minutes later. I do not know if you were armed when you were taken into custody. I'll let the record uh, reflect that. I do not identify by that name, nor do I know any individual by that name. I'm here in third party. The record's and noted, although the jury will disregard the comments, they are not evidence in this case. Next question, please. At the time, you said, did you respond to that? incident at the park? No. So how can you know who was involved with it if you didn't respond yourself? Because you stated at any time this investigation took a long time to complete and from this investigation we determined that you were the suspect in that investigation. You determined was, that? I did not, no. Okay. Can you pull up exhibit one and publish? The state would please do that. Thank you. The jury have you? Yes. Um, can you see? Well, I know you can. Can you see the the red lines on this map that we're looking at? Yes. And what do those red lines constitute? Barricades. So would it be fair to say that there's a red line at every cross street that we can see on this map? That would be... Do you mean start, along the parade route? Start, the along, the, along the parade route, starting at east... Main Street, there's a red mark. Oh, I didn't mean to put that uh, arrow. Can we clear that? I was trying to put like a little dot. <coughs> Starting there, there's a red line there. There's two at Buckley. Hold on, just so the record is clear, he put a mark at the near the intersection of East Main and White Rock Avenue. So from that location to where? There's two at Buckley. Well, hold on. You're a testifying now. you got to ask a question. So the jury will disregard that. Are there, are there two at Buckley? Yes. Is there one at Martin Street? Yes. Is there one at... Is, is there two at Barstow Street? Yes. One at Gaspar? Yes. One at North Grand and one at West Broadway? There's two at West Broadway. Well, this is one is on the closer to where it says North Grand, and one is on the other side of the star right there. This is what I'm referring to. Okay. Yes, there are two right there. That? Please clear that, Madam Clerk. So there, there's two there. There's two at Clinton Street. Can you see those two? Yes. There's one at Maple Avenue. Can you see that one? Yes. And there's one at right here at West Avenue. Can you see that? Correct. Yes. So it would be fair to say that there's pretty much barriers at every single street from White Rock and East Main to West Main and West Northwest Avenue? Yes. 
barricades at all those streets? Yes. Do you know if there were officers stationed at those barricades? Yes, this map shows, it appears, uh, where everyone was uh, for their assignments that day. So would it be fair to say if someone wanted to exit the parade route, they would essentially be blocked in by the officers and barricades? No. There are barricades at these streets, we can see. Would that be fair to say? No. So it's not fair to say that there's barricades at these streets? It's fair to say that there's barricades at the streets. So, essentially, if someone was leaving the parade route, can they just go right through the barricades? Based on the previous videos that we just were shown. Not, not based on the previous vid videos. If someone was leaving the parade route, can they just go down these streets that are barricaded? Can they just drive right out of there? Yes, the video show that. How when it's barricaded? As the video we sh were shown we're earlier, the vehicle the went right through the barricade. Hold on, you ask the question, you have to let him answer that he's giving you the reason. You asked him how. He's explaining it. There's plenty of ways to get off the parade route. You, you can stop um, after being given lawful orders by officers, and they could have directed you off the parade route in a safe manner. You could have stopped the vehicle at any point, or you could have driven through plastic barricades like you did at Northwest Avenue, where I was located. And so yes, you, you can drive through plastic who? barricades. Do you, you refer to as who? Daryl Brooks, you, the person that's talking. Do you? And how did you come to the conclusion of that name as you stated that you couldn't see past this building here, which you just, which you <clears throat> said is the Wisconsin House. Would that be fair to say? Well, that's a compound question, so I, you need to rephrase that, sir. You state clear, clear this right there. Please, is that a please? Clear. Can you clear this uh, circle and arrow right here? That's. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You stated that from where you were positioned that you couldn't see around that building. Did you, did you say that? Yes, I did. So it would be fair to say you also couldn't see what was happening along the parade route on Main Street. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. So it would be also fair to say that everything that you knew up until that point came over the radio and you didn't have first-hand knowledge. That is correct. I, I don't know uh, police protocol, so just asking. Mr. Brooks, please ask your next question. I'm, I'm getting to it. No, I, right, but I, I have to advise the jury to disregard the comment because it's not testimony. And you stated that, well, let's, let's go to, uh, yeah, go ahead. You don't need, do you need that? We're going to turn it off. Yeah, you can, you can take that down. Sorry right. about that. All right. Thank you. Uh, I believe it's exhibit 57. Pull up exhibit 57. <coughs> Can we bring it to about 16 or 17 seconds? Bring it back a little bit. Uh, one more, one more second, if you could. There, can you pause it there? 
Would it be fair to say that those are barricades that are laying in the street there? Correct. Any idea why they were not standing up? Yes, I do. What would be the reason? It was very windy that day, so when they were standing up uh, how they normally are, they kept on blowing across the street. So we tilted them on their sides so they wouldn't get blown across the road, and they would still stay up there and block traffic. They would be able to block traffic by laying down? Yes, they serve the same purpose. But they would be able to block traffic by laying down? I guess I don't understand what your question is here. Would, would it be much more easier to see them if they were facing upright than laying down? I think the height difference between them laying down and uh, being upright is probably quite minuscule because as you see the legs that are now up in the air are approximately the same height as what the bar would be if they were standing the standing up how they normally are. And you come to that conclusion, conclusion how? Based on my training experience after deploying barricades on numerous events and working several parades in my work history. So you would estimate that a barricade facing upright and a barricade laying down would be the same height? Approximately. It looks like you're firing your weapon right there. Would that be fair to say? I do not know if I have uh, pulled the trigger yet or not. I don't believe I have. I you were ready, ready to fire at that point? That's correct. Do you recall what you were aiming for? Yes, I do. Can you stay for the record and for the jury? You, Daryl Brooks. Again, you make reference to the you and the name. How did you come to that? Being seeing as how you just testified to that you couldn't see anything before uh, what you call the Wisconsin House. Would that be fair to say that you testified to that? That's correct. And. You also stated that you learned additional information later on. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. So how could you determine at this time right now where we're looking at that you knew the suspect's name and the driver? Because you keep referring to you and then you saying the name. How did you how did you have that information at this point that that's paused right here that we're looking at? I didn't say at that time I knew your name. You referred to the name, did you not? That's correct. So how were you able to obtain the information about the name? I did not know your name at the time I shot at you. Who's the you you were referring to? Daryl Brooks. Again, you say a name that you haven't answered how you came to that information. Were you told this? Yes. By whom? I do not know who told me. Ultimately, I just know that throughout the course of the investigation, you, your name, you were arrested within 30 or 40 minutes, and you were identified as Daryl Brooks, who was a suspect in this incident. So you either had to hear that name from either a report that you heard or someone told you. How did you come to the conclusion of the name? I'm assuming someone at the police department told me your name. And you don't recall who that was? No. Even though you can cite the name so clearly and identify it and keep stressing it and stressing it and you don't recall how you learned the information of the name? That is correct. So is it fair to say that you're just using the name based off what you're told and not what you were aware of? What are you asking me? Is it fair to say that you're identifying this name based off of what you told and not what you knew? I'm saying the name based on the fact that you are now, 
you were arrested for this incident, you were identified during this incident, and because of that investigation, that is how we know your name. Would it be fair to say, and obviously you said you've been uh, in law enforcement for seven and a half years, correct? Correct. I'm sure you've done a lot of investigations in that seven and a half years, is that fair to say? Correct. So you do understand that during an, a police investigation, any suspect is innocent until proven guilty, would that be fair to say? That's correct. And so with that knowledge, why are you so eminent about the name of the suspect that you just testified to not being aware of at the time? That you testified to, in fact, being told? I'm sorry, I'm confused by your question. You say it again. I think it was clear, but I'll say it again. Thank you. Well, I'll say it this way. You testified to not being aware of the suspect's name at the time. Correct. You also, you also testified to being told of the name, correct? Correct. I don't, I don't know how I came about your name. I would assume it was through the investigation at the police department. And were you in fact part of that investigation? No, I was not. So it would be fair to say that by you using a name, you would not be sure. How can you be sure? I'll object. Um, Ground. Argument. It's been asked. It's been answered. It's argumentative. The objection is sustained. Please ask your next question. When the vehicle was approaching me, I could see the silhouette of his uh, face and upper portion of his body. Can you describe what you mean by silhouette? The upper portion of a person's body, I would say from maybe chest, shoulders, and head and face. You said silhouette though. What, what is a silhouette? The outer portions of what would be like your shoulder down your arms to your chest. The silhouette would be the outer portion of it. That would be the upper half, not the silhouette. Objection. What do you mean by silhouette? Uh, object. The objection is sustained. It's Mr. Brooks is not asking a question. It was argumentative. Um, the jury would, can certainly would it decide fair? what that means, but would he's it, answered the question. Would it be fair to say that that would be equivalent to a profile? What do you mean by a profile? A profile would be sort of like a like a side angle view. Would it be fair to say that a silhouette would be more of an outline that would be kind of similar to a profile? I don't know exactly what you're asking here, but I can tell you when the vehicle was driving towards me, I could see your face. And then as the vehicle drove to my right, yes, then I saw the side of your face. And so then, yes, as a vehicle passes you, you see different portions of the driver, I guess you could say. And so you aim towards what you can see? Correct. So that would be the upper part, as you say, the, you said the show, you made a, I think it was your left hand pointing to your right shoulder, a uh, shoulder and up silhouette, as you say? That is what I could see when you were driving at me. You asked me what I could see of you, and that is what I could see of you in the vehicle when you are approaching me. The question now, though, is, is that what you aim for? I was aiming at you, yes. At what you can see? I was aiming at you in the driver's seat, yes. Shoulder, as you pointed to, and up, correct? Would that be fair to say? Yes. But you did testify that they were kill shots, did you not? Objection. Argument. Sustained. It's also been asked and answered in multiple ways. At Do you point. recall what your shots hit? If anything? 
Uh, yes, later on uh, throughout the investigation when I got no, at my, the time, at the time, not not later on, at the time where you fired the shots. Mr. Brooks, you asked a question. He was attempting to answer it, so you have to let. I'm trying to give him <laughs> clarification on what. But I you mean. Ha but you have to let him answer the question that you asked, and if you feel the need for follow up, then you can do that or ask a very specific question. But he's gonna he. I'm allowing him to answer. Um, he was interrupted. Go ahead. So if there was information that you're acknowledging that you had no knowledge of, which would be essentially the reason why you would ask if they can volunteer more information to you, then how would there be, how would there be any way of knowing if you struck the suspect? Objection. Grounds. It's sustained. It's a compound, confusing question for you to be I also think it mischaracterizes the testimony. <coughs> Did you notice any tents on that vehicle? Uh, the front windshield that I looked through, I know it was not tinted or it was not tinted enough to um, not make me recognize you. Did you see any tents on the side of the vehicle? Not that I recall. And if they were, they weren't that dark. You don't recall, though, for sure, if there were any tents to any windows of the vehicle you saw? Well, all windows are tinted to some extent. It just depends on to what uh, percentage of tint that they come with. So I'm sure there is tint on the on the windows because vehicles come from the factory with some level of window tint. So I guess to your question, was there any window tint? I'm sure there was, but not to a degree that would prevent me from seeing who was driving it. Explain what you mean by uh, tint percentage. So there's different varying degrees of tint that you can put on vehicles. Can you elaborate for the jury? Grounds. Okay. I'll overrule the objection. Mr. Brooks, please um, ask your question again. Um, you stated that uh, all cars come from the manufacturer with some level of tint, but you made a reference to percentage. Correct. Can you elaborate on uh, percentage, what, what, what would constitute a darker tint versus a lighter tint? Well, you've asked two questions now, so which one do you want them to answer first? <laughs> the, the last one, I'm sorry. So you're asking about, about lighter the versus tint percentage, darker? About the tint percentage. So you, like a... A 50% tint would be a lighter tint than like a 35% tint. So the 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 lower the percentage, the darker the tint. That is correct. Okay. You stated that you're pretty decent with the. Uh, making out makes making modeling years of uh, vehicles based on your line of work would that be fair to say that is correct would you know of the make and model of the vehicle that you saw that day would you know if those model vehicles come from the manufacturer with any tank To be honest with you, I don't work for Ford, so I don't know if they come um, with tint, but I would assume, <laughs> as most vehicles, um, when they come from the factory, they come with some sort of tint. I believe usually the front is approximately 50% tint, and the rears are usually, I think, 25 or 30 or something like that. So from your knowledge, the, the backer windows are usually coming from the manufacturer, maybe a little bit darker than the front. Correct. No further questions. <coughs> Very briefly, thank you. Uh, so the barricades that we saw at the interstation, intersection where you were posted, those have been blown over by the wind? 
Uh, yes. So when I deployed the barricades initially, um, standing upright, they kept on blowing directly, like right off the street. So um, I tipped them down on their sides so they wouldn't, I guess, uh, catch as much wind and they wouldn't blow all over the place. Did those barricades appear to slow down the SUV as it drove through them? Objection. Speculation. Um, overruled, he may answer, given all of the cross. Uh, no, it did not slow the vehicle down at all. You discharged your firearm three times toward the vehicle? That is correct. Did all three rounds strike the vehicle? Yes, they did. Can we please put up for the jury exhibit number three, which has previously been published? Go ahead. We're going to start at the... Two minute and 59 second mark if we can. And while we're working on that, can we please clear the screen now? Thank you. What, what exhibit is that? Three. Three. We're at the 258 second mark uh, on this exhibit number three. Do you see a vehicle on the screen? <coughs> yes, I do. Does that appear to be the same color of vehicle you saw uh, drive through the intersection where you were posted? Yes. Let's play from the second, please. Pause. We paused at 302. Does that appear to be the same make and model as the SUV you saw driving through the intersection? Objection. Overrule. It's clear yes, it does. Is there a difference between this vehicle and the vehicle you saw at your intersection? Uh, the difference in the vehicle is that there's no damage on this one. Okay. Let's play again from this point. minutes and 47 seconds. Did you see a person wearing a gray hooded sweatshirt in that clip? Yes, I did. Was the appearance of that person and their clothing consistent with the person you saw driving the SUV through your intersection? Objection, speculation, two different incidents. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes. Can we please put up for everybody exhibit number 120, which has previously been received and published? Go ahead. Oh, wait, wait. You see the photograph on the screen in front of you? Yes, I do. Does that appear to be a vehicle consistent with the one you saw driving through your intersection? Yes. And the person seated in the driver's seat, like the same person you saw driving that red SUV? Yes. Can we put up for everybody, please, exhibit number nine? Go ahead. You see the photograph on the screen in front of you? Yes. Does that appear to be the same vehicle that you saw Driving through the intersection of uh, and Scott. Objection, hearsay. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. Does that appear to be the same driver of that same vehicle? Objection, hearsay. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. Can we please put up for everybody exhibit number 169, which has previously been published. Go ahead. Objection, relevancy. Overruled. See the photograph on the screen in front of you? Yes. Does that appear to be the same vehicle that you saw drive through the intersection of Wisconsin and Maine? Yes. Does that appear to be the same driver? Yes. What's going on with that front passenger window? It looks Objection like it's leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. It looks like it's rolled down. So if someone had, before this incident, painted that window black, covered it in a black paper bag, and taped it up with duct tape, and then rolled the window down, would that have prevented you from seeing through the front passenger window? Objection, speculation. No. Overruled the witness, my answer. Who was the no. person depicted in exhibits number 120, number 9, and number 169? Daryl Brooks. Thank you. Objection, I do not consent to being called their name. Brooks, you can hear me on one bill. 
the room. Well, since Judge has noted, however, the jury is advised to disregard as it's not testimony. It's a comment. All right. Thank you, sir. You may step down. And I appreciate the patience of everyone. As we concluded with that witness, uh, we will now take our lunch break. It's 12.58. Um, I'll give the jurors... Um, I'll have the parties come back at uh, 2 o'clock and the jurors probably shortly after that. So thank you, everyone. Please rise for the jury. Just witnesses for this afternoon. I don't need to know who, just the numbers and if there's anything else you are asking the court to do this afternoon. No, um, we're behind schedule, Judge, but we'll keep moving along. We will certainly have a full slate of witnesses available for the afternoon. Do you know about how late you intend to go tonight? Um, I'd like to try to keep it as close to 435 as possible, given that it is a Friday. It's been a long week. Um, any idea when you'll be requesting the view of the vehicle? Will that be next week? That will definitely be next week, um, probably Tuesday at this point, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Then that answered my question about scheduling, so everyone is aware of um, what we intend to do this afternoon. We are in recess. I'll see everyone at 1 o'clock. I'm sorry, at 2 o'clock. It's now almost 1. Thank you. We are. Thank you. Please be seated. Oh, Madam Clerk, when you get an opportunity, I uh -huh. forgot my water. Oh, right. And I assume you saw we have Sam. Yes. Hi, Sam. I'm told we are well first of all we are back on the record appearances are as they were before I'm told the jurors are done with lunch and available for us so I presume the state's able to call its next witness yes we're ready Your Honor. thank you all right great then we'll have the jurors brought out I will um, go tell them since I had Madam Clerk step off the bench for me Record was my ICF received? I have not looked at my mail today. I can't tell you that. Also, for the record, I'm appearing by special appearance on behalf of my client. I'm sorry, sir. I can't hear you. Could you start that over? Audio. Oh, that's what happens when I send you on errands. All right. Um, the audio is now on. I did call the case earlier. Just noted that the appearances are as they were before. The jury is on its way in. Um, and I just will state in case it wasn't clear, Mr. Brooks asked about an inmate communication form. I have not reviewed my mail today, so I can't tell you whether I've received anything, but I'll take a look and at the next break, uh, if need be, we can address that. And I just wanted to state that I'm here. <clears throat> I'm here under special appearance on behalf of my client with all rights reserved. All right, I'll rise for the jury, please. State may call its next witness. Thank you, Judge. State calls Officer Christopher Moss. So where did you go to look for the vehicle? Um, as I was moving my fleet uh, near um, Donny Boyce Tavern on Main Street, 
Um, I subsequently observed a male Hispanic running towards me, waving his hands frantically to garner my attention. And as uh, I asked him what he needed, um, he subsequently stated he knew where the vehicle was. Did you um, understand what he meant by that? I clarified with him uh, that he was speaking of the vehicle that was indeed involved in the incident uh, in the downtown area as well as the vehicle that Officer Skolnick had fired rounds at. He confirmed this and I subsequently told him to get into my squad car and uh, began traveling with him. Okay. And the vehicle was registered to Don Woods <clears throat> solely? Objection, leading, relevancy, who is it related to? Um, the objections are noted. Um, I'll sustain as to the form of the question and ask Attorney Upper to rephrase. Was the registration only in one person's name? From what I understand, it was. Okay. Do you know the relationship between Don Woods and Daryl Brooks? Objection, speculation. Overruled. The witness may answer. No, ma'am, I do not know the relationship. At a later point, uh, as you were, well, strike that, let me ask this. Did you remain with this vehicle for some time? Yes, for some time. And uh, were other resources, uh, law enforcement and other resources called to the area to deal with this vehicle, sir? Yes, ma'am, they were. And as that was occurring, are you aware of other police activity that was occurring nearby? Yes, ma'am, I was. And what was that, please? I had heard via police radio, Officer Luling advised that he was out with a subject in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street, which is just a couple blocks away. And did you hear Officer Luling indicate a name for the subject that he was out with? Yes, I did. And what was that name? Officer Luling aired over police radio that he was out with a male subject identifying himself as Darrell Brooks. All right, sir, thank you. I don't have any other questions. We can take down 99. Oh, I'm sorry, I do have one other question about 99. I apologize, Your Objection. Oh, overruled, she may answer. I mean, she may ask. Do you know what time you snapped that photograph of Exhibit 99? Yes, ma'am, I took that photograph on the date in question at 5.01 p.m. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you, you're cross, Mr. Brooks. Uh, you stated that uh, you were flagged down by uh, a Hispanic male running at you waving his hands. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. Do you recall his name? I do. And would you state it for the jury and for the record? His name is uh, Abel Lascado. And do you recall if uh, Mr. Lascano gave you any additional information during your traveling to where the vehicle was located? I don't understand your question. You stated that uh, the Mr. Lascano got into your vehicle and you traveled to where the vehicle was located. Is that fair to say? That's correct. Did you learn any additional information from Mr. Lascano? How do you say Lascano? Lascano. Lascano. Did you learn during your travel to where the vehicle was located? Did you learn any additional information from Mr. Lascano? Not while we were traveling to the vehicle. So you traveled to the vehicle in complete silence? No, he was trying to direct me with the location of the uh, Red Ford Escape. Did he say he saw any anyone driving the Vehicle. Objection hearsay. Sustained. So all he told you was where the vehicle was. He didn't tell you if he saw anyone driving. Objection hearsay. Grounds. Um, the witness may answer the question as long as it he does not answer with hearsay. Go ahead. Overrule. Can you uh, restate your question, please? So all that the. Uh, Mr. Lascano, all that he told you was the location of the vehicle, not if he saw anyone driving? I object that question calls for hearsay response, Your Honor. Um, I, I would agree hearing that again. Sustained. Did he, did he at all tell you that he saw someone in the vehicle? Objection. Hearsay. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustained? Um, it's hearsay. 
to ask him what Mr. Lascano told him would be hearsay. So all, so all Mr. Lascano did was just direct you to the vehicle? That's correct. That's all you guys talked about during your trip to the vehicle? Objection asked and answered. Grounds. Uh, sustained. It was asked, um, and I previously sustained the objection. So next question, please. When you were able to locate the vehicle, where did Mr. Lis look? look Liscano go? Um, once the vehicle was located, I had Mr. Liscano stand by in my fleet until uh, other officers arrived to assist me, and then I transferred him over to someone else. Do you know if he made any report at that time? Define report. Did he make any report to law, law enforcement at that time? <laughs> I'm Pretty not clear. sure if he did or not. Do you recall Mr. Lascano uh, yelling that there were subjects standing outside of the building? Objection, Your Honor. I'm going to excuse the jury while I take up a legal issue. I'll rise for the jury, please. Thank you. Be seated. Mr. Brooks, before I have you question this witness any further, it sounds like to me that you are attempting to offer through this witness the statements made by Mr. Lascano. If that is what you are trying to do, um, you may not do that. You will have to call Mr. Lascano as a witness if you so choose, if he's on your witness list. But that your questions are seeking to elicit hearsay from this witness. That's why I had the jury removed so we could I can explain uh, my ruling and why I'm going to direct you not to ask this witness questions about what Mr. Lascano may or may not have said. I'm reading directly from the, his report. That would be double hearsay then, because it's 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 not mis you need Mr. Lascano here to say what he told this officer. If you are attempting to offer it for the truth of the matter asserted, which is what I believe you are doing, you're attempting to establish the veracity of something Mr. Lascano either said or didn't say through another witness. That is hearsay. So it's not hearsay for the, uh, the prosecutor to bring up? Uh... I'm not going to talk about other rulings. There's been an objection by the state, and I'm sustaining the objection, and I'm directing you not to ask this witness questions that would call for this witness to say what Mr. Lascano said. That is hearsay. That is textbook hearsay, Mr. Brooks. And then I don't think it's fair for, the, for me to object to hearsay from the uh, prosecution about the, along the lines of the same type yeah, of thing. I'm not going to have a debate on what may have come in previously. Um, I know you've made a number of hearsay objections, many of which uh, the answers that were being provided were not hearsay. Um, but I would direct your attention to 908.01 of the Wisconsin statutes. You have that book in front of you that I provided to you a number of days ago at the beginning of this trial or near the beginning of this trial. There's the definitional section of the statutes, which defines hearsay. Uh, it also, and then if you go on to 908.02, um, that's obviously one you may want to look at as well. Um, and then 90803 has the exception. So unless you Clearly. can give me an exception, sir, as to why this witness should be allowed to answer those questions, I'm going to, again, directly not to directly ask directly from questions. his report. The report that he that he wrote, nothing nothing is coming from. I'm reading directly from his report. That's that what I doesn't have to change the fact that it's hearsay. You said what? That doesn't change the fact that it's hearsay. So that his report creates is another hearsay? level of hearsay. It's an out of court statement. So not his... this witness made, but what another witness made. So you have to. So I can't read from his report that he wrote. 
You can't ask this witness questions that call for a hearsay answer unless there's no objection from the state. Or you can convince me there's an exception to the hearsay rule that applies. Do you have an exception you'd like to offer to the court? So I might as well not read the report that he wrote then if I can't question him about the report that he wrote. That's your misunderstanding, sir, what is hearsay. And all I can tell you is I'm sustaining the objection. I'm going to bring the jury back out and we'll go from there. All right. Madam Clerk, bring the jury out, please. Clear bias. Clear bias. Mr. Brooks, I understand you may disagree with me. I don't consent to or agree to being called that name. For the record, again, I'm here as a third-party intervener on behalf of my client. I don't know why that's not understood by now. So I guess I can't bring up the plaintiff either, huh? Take an agreement. All rise. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Continue with your question, sir. I got a tray of lightning. The jury will disregard that last comment. And that one as well. It's not your opportunity to testify. You'll be given an opportunity should you choose later, sir. But please question the witness. If I can ever get to it, I'll do that. And again, the jury will disregard that statement. It's not evidence. You made reference to a hat being on the hood. Can we pull Exhibit 99 up again? Are you asking the state to do that, sir? Can it please be pulled up? Sure, it can. And it will. The jury can let me know when it's on the screens in the jury box, please. All right. It's in the jury box. Continue, please. You testified to this being a hat, right? That's correct. And from this picture, can you tell what that is? Not specifically. So how do we know if that's a hat from looking at this picture? From looking at this picture, it would be difficult to determine if that's actually a hat. So it would be fair to say you don't know what that is? Based on this picture, you're right. Based on this picture? Based on this picture, I'm not able to determine what that item is. Would it be also fair to say we can't even determine if that's outside or inside of the vehicle at that point? I would disagree and say that is on the exterior of the vehicle. And how would you make that assumption if you can't tell what it is? Objection. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. Can you clear that? Thank you, Madam Clerk. You can definitively say from this picture that you can tell where the item is based on this picture? Yes. Are you going off what you found or what you can see from the picture? I can see from this picture that that item is on the exterior of the vehicle between the hood that is destroyed and the windshield. 
So it's on the hood? It is between the hood and the windshield of the vehicle. And you can tell that from this picture. Objection as an answer. Grounds. Argumentative. Sustained as to both grounds. From this picture, you could tell what this is. Yes. Just from the picture. Yes. And how do you come to that determination? Based on the fact that it's hanging on the exterior of the vehicle from the driver's side mirror, um, that it is in the shape of a headband and it is partially illuminated in this photograph with LED lighting. It could it, it could be fair to say that it's anything. Would you not say that that's fair? Just from looking at the picture, it doesn't necessarily say, or it doesn't, it's not 100% identifiable from this picture. Would, would that be fair to say? Objection, compound question. Sustained as to the form of the question. Please rephrase. Just from strictly looking at this picture, you can't, Positively say what the item is. Objection. That's a mischaracterization of his testimony. Sustained. Please rephrase. Clear, clear, clear the photo. You're asking, Madam Clerk, to please clear, clear the photo. Mr. Brooks, I'd ask that you show some deference to my clerk and not bark orders at her and use simple courtesy. Thank you. And thank you, Madam Clerk. Will I be awarded the same, Your Honor? Please ask your next question, sir. Will I be awarded the same, Your Honor? Please ask your next question. I, I, I will. I just want to know if I'll be awarded, to, I, I awarded the same. Thank you. Please continue. Any other investigating after you had uh, took this photo? Can you rephrase the question? Did you do any other investigating after you took this photo? I... Uh, after the photographs were collected of the vehicle in place from multiple angles, um, I did locate uh, identifying information inside the vehicle. What I'm asking is, so let me back up. So that was the extent of your investigation was finding whatever you found in the vehicle at that point. Correct. Sure. Grounds. I'll withdraw. <laughs> Thank you. Correct. Would that be the same protocol if you were searching a, a, a home? Objection relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain. Relevance. And you may mention that the vehicle wasn't I guess I would say touched or uh, bet between the time that you were flagged down with the location of the vehicle until you actually observed the vehicle, you stated that you don't believe the vehicle was, was touched in any way in that time? Objection, that's a misstatement of his care of his testimony. Grounds, he said something similar to Sustained uh, as to the form of the question. Are you sure that the vehicle was not touched in the time that you were flagged down about the location of the possible vehicle and observing the vehicle? I am unaware if the vehicle was manipulated in any fashion from the time that Mr. Lascano flagged me down and to the time that I located the vehicle in the driveway. Do you know approximately how long it took you to get to the vehicle when you were initially flagged down about the location of the vehicle? I do not know how long it took me uh, to get to the vehicle upon being flagged down. So it's possible that it could have been manipulated? Yes, it's possible. Would you agree that a vehicle registered to one person and information found by another person constitutes that more than one person used the vehicle? Objection. Grounds? Uh, go ahead. You're... The Grounds? The the question was, does that prove that more than one person could drive the car? That's an improper question. That, that wasn't the question. Um, 
well, sustained as to the form of the question and assumes facts, not in evidence. State that last part again. It assumes facts, not in evidence, your question. Your next question, please. Is it fair to say that people leave all types of information in, in family members' vehicles at any time? Objection. Grounds? Irrelevant. Speculation. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain. Ask your next question, Mr. Brooks, please. May I have the grounds, please? The objection has been sustained. Ask your next question, please. May I have the grounds? The court's not answering that. The record is self-evident. Is that a tacit agreement? Here's what I found. Um, sir, I don't know what a tacit agreement is, so please keep going. Clearly know what it is. Um, would it be fair to say, and this is along the lines of the same question, would it be fair to say that at, at some point you've left items in other people's vehicles? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain. Next question, please, sir. I've sustained this question multiple times, multiple it ways. You've asked question. it. Next question, please. May I have the grounds? 90611, right. sir. May I have the grounds? Next question, please. Is it to relevancy? Is it to hearsay? Under 90611, ask your next question or I will cut off your cross-examination. Please ask your next question, sir. You have to give the grounds, though, Your Honor. Especially if I'm really just asking for the grounds of the sustain. Sir, ask your next question. What's the point of me asking questions if I can't ask anything? The jury will disregard his commentary that he just stated right now. Did any of the people that you spoke with um, give any reason to why they, why the suspects that they identified were run from the scene? Objection. Speculation Grounds. also calls for hearsay. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds. Next question, sir. And were you instruct, instructed to make contact with anyone at that point? Yes, I was. Do you recall who? I do. May you stay for the jury and for the record? Yes, upon arrival to the police department, I was directed to make contact with District Attorney Sue Opper. And when you say Sue Opper, are you referring to District Attorney Sue Opper? Yes, that's what I said. Is she here in court today? Yes, she is. Can you point her out for the jury? She's seated at the prosecution table wearing the gray cardigan. Uh, let the record reflect that the witness has identified uh, Attorney Opper. No objection, Your Honor. The record will so reflect. <coughs> so you just stated that the vehicle wasn't touched between those times. So what, what if anything new did you need to search for? Objection. Argumentative. Well, um, overall, he may answer. The basis of the search warrant was to ensure that, again, any items of evidentiary value I may have overlooked due to, again, the exigency of trying to find identifying information of an outstanding suspect, as well as clearing the vehicle for safety reasons. That is the pur purpose of the search warrant, is to do a more slow, methodical search of the vehicle for said items of evidentiary value. But it would be fair to say that after initially um, clearing the vehicle, for, as you said, for any possible threats to, to you and investigating the vehicle further a second time, what did you feel would be of evidentiary value at that point that you hadn't already observed before? Objection. Asked and answered. 
argumentative grounds. I'm referring to him stating the evidentiary value. Asked and answered. Sustained. So what was the evidentiary value that you were looking for? Same objection. With the, with the search warrant. It's the same question a different way, so I'm going to sustain it. It's been asked. It's been answered. Next question, please. Can you give an example of what evidentiary value is? Um, something of evidentiary value can really be anything that's pertinent to the case. Um, an example would be like a shell casing or a spot of blood that can render DNA results, things of that nature. Did you find uh, any of those things when obtaining the search warrant? Objection. Grounds. Well, that's factually inaccurate, Your Honor. <laughs> it assumes a fact, not an evidence. I'll sustain the objection as to the form of the question. Did you find, upon, upon obtaining the search warrant, were you able to find anything of evidentiary value? Same objection. Assumes a fact, not an evidence. It's it's not. Sustained. It assumes facts, not an evidence. Please rephrase and establish a foundation related to whether this witness performed that subsequent search. After obtaining the search warrant, did you yourself go back in? Search the vehicle? No. Do you recall what officer was dispatched to do to execute the search warrant? <coughs> no, I do not know who uh, ultimately searched the vehicle for items of evidentiary value. Did that complete uh, your part of the investigation for, for that incident at that time? Yes, upon getting the search warrant, uh, I was relieved of my duties. Did you did you ever come back into the investigation in any way after that point? After that point, no. <laughs> after your uh, part of the investigation ended, were you able to obtain any more information that you didn't know the night of your investigation? Objection made. Grounds for speculation. Sustained. Grounds for sustained, Your Honor. Please ask your next question. more contact with uh, Attorney Opera after that initial night? No. When were you aware that it was a possibility that you could be called to testify in this matter? <coughs> when I re received a subpoena to testify in this matter. Excuse me, I, I didn't. When I received a subpoena to testify in this matter. Was that subpoena served to you by the district attorney's office? Yes, it was. Was it served by Attorney Yacker? Um, I don't recall who served me directly. I believe it was via electronic. Do you recall when you received that subpoena? I don't recall the exact date, but it was a few months ago. So it was pretty recent, but a little, a little time since you received it. Yes, that's fair to say. Would you by chance know who the plaintiff is in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Ever seen or talked to the plaintiff? Had any physical interaction with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Vague and compound Grounds. question. Sustained. <laughs> you even know if there's a plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Sustained. You know who filed the complaint in this matter? Uh, the complaint was filed by the district attorney's office. Do you know if it was filed by Attorney Opper? I don't know particularly who filed the complaint. I just know it was by the Waukesha County District Attorney's Office. And during your time in law enforcement, would it be fair to say that whoever files the complaint is a party to the matter? 
objection Grounds. beyond the scope of the witnesses. Now, Chair. Um, sustained. Next question. Please. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. Any reason why the state of Wisconsin would be identified as the plaintiff when they did not file the complaint? Objection. Grounds. Argumentative. Misstatement of the law. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Ask your next question, please. Was that the grounds? Next question, please. The jury deserves to know this. The jury will disregard that last statement. I sustain the objection, sir. Ask your next question, please. I'm, I'm aware that it was a sustain. I'm, I'm aware. I just wanted to know the grounds. You can't keep hiding stuff from the jury. Mr. Brooks, the court is not hiding anything from anyone, and the jury will disregard that last statement. It is not evidence in any way in this case. Would it be fair to say that any case has a plaintiff? Objection. Grounds. Lack of foundation beyond the scope of the witness's knowledge. Um, sustained. Would it be, can I rephrase the question? Go ahead. I can't say whether it will be answered or not, but you can go ahead but and I rephrase can't, it. I can't rephrase, <laughs> just so we're clear. Whether it's answered or not, I can still rephrase the question. I, I don't know what the question will be, sir, so I can't make a, a ruling that's advisory. So ask your next question, please. Are you aware that in any case brought into a courtroom, there has to be a plaintiff? Objection. Grounds. Same question. Grounds is not and also the mistakes question. the law, so sustained. There's no plaintiff, how's their case? Move to strike. So, uh, the jury will disregard Browns. the last comment and statement made by Mr. Brooks. Browns. There's a defendant that has to be a plaintiff. Of the law, it's not relevant. This jury will be the judge of the facts. The court is the judge of the law. Please continue, sir, or under 90611, I will uh, stop the cross-examination. If, there, if there's a defendant, there has to be a plaintiff. Mr. Brooks, please stop. The jury will also disregard that statement. It's a mischaracterization of the law. It's a misstatement of the law. Based on what law or fact, Your Honor? And I'll address that with Mr. Brooks once again after the jury has been excused. Um, one final time, you may ask another question. Otherwise, I will, and it must not be along the same lines or under 90611, I will ask the state whether there's any redirect. Do you know of anyone who filed a claim in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. It's also vague, so I'll sustain it. So the grounds is vagueness? And relevance. Is it vague or is it relevant? Sustain, Mr. Brooks. Next question. So since your initial night of investigation, you've done no investigation since then in this matter? Correct. And have you seen any news reports? Objection. Re Relevance. Can I finish the question? Um, you can, there's been no identification, so under 90611, meaning of, I'm going to sustain the objection without hearing the rest of the question. Um, I don't see how it would have any relevance. I'll let you make an offer of proof after we're outside the presence of the jury, and if necessary, you can recall this witness. Next question.
in that case then uh since that is stated on the record no further questions i, I would like to finish at some point sir finish your cross exam as to that limited no further questions okay but as to that limited topic only so if there are other things outside that topic please finish your questioning I just said two times. I'm going to say it again. No further questions. All right. Thank you then, sir. Does the state have any redirect? No, nothing else. Thank you, Judge. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, you may be excused. Um, I'm going to excuse the jury momentarily to take up a legal issue with the parties, and hopefully we'll have you brought back out shortly. You can use this opportunity for a comfort break, though. You may make an offer of proof, sir, as it relates to why or what questions and what information you believe this officer would provide about news reports that he has seen. So the offer of proof would just be to that one question? What would the question be? The question was, would have been, would have been if I was allowed to finish it, had he seen any news reports Con, uh, directly connected to the incident. But what's the, the relevance? Same, the, same for thing him? That, the same thing that many other witnesses have been asked, and, and it was never, it was never uh, sustained. Then it was never even objected to. So it was the same. It was the same. Let's focus one of the on the questions. specific objection that was posed, and my and what was the willingness grounds for it? to give you an an opportunity to provide the court with an offer of proof. This was a what relevance would this particular witnessing news reports have to his testimony the same thing that any other witness that was asked the same question which would be what you have to be specific sir i'm I was not gonna, I'm not gonna assume they saw, i understand what you are saying have they saw any reports related to the incident that's the same question that, that's been asked by numerous well, there would witnesses. be a follow-up to that so how is it relevant to this witness's testimony it's relevant to anyone who gets on the stand's testimony. What's the legal basis you believe it's relevant to his testimony, sir? It obviously forms an opinion. Again, I'm not... You need to explain to me, sir, the legal basis why you believe I should allow that witness to be asked that question and then any follow-up based on his response. What would have been the follow-up? It I'm asking it you, got sir, asked and you're it got the answered. one who's the proponent of this particular testimony and this questioning and the evidence. So explain to me your legal basis for why you believe it's relevant to ask or any other reason, any legal basis you believe it's that I should allow that question to be asked. I don't, I don't understand how you want me to answer that. I, I've, I've stated I've stated the reason why I asked the question. No, you stated it's obvious, but it's not obvious to me, so I, I'm asking you to explain it. I also stated that it, it... I just clearly stated, clearly, that it goes towards biasness. I'm that sorry, would be relevant. Wait, wait, it goes to what? B biased. Bias? Biased. No, bias, B-I-A-S. Not, there's no T at the end. Bias. I so want to make sure I understand so, so your reasoning correctly, how sir. So something. it's how you're saying something. it goes to bias. How does it go to bias of this witness, sir? How would it not go to if you see something in the news? <laughs> it's not a proper legal argument, sir. Okay, well, I don't know how you want me to answer how that. How would what he saw subsequent to his investigation impact either what he did beforehand or his testimony here? You have to make an offer of proof as to that. Without that, I'm not going to allow it. You, you didn't allow it anyway, so it do a matter at this point. I'm giving you the opportunity. It's called an offer of proof. Okay, I said I would recall the witness if I determined. I'm, well aware, if I I'm determine. well aware what an offer of proof is. Okay, I'm well aware. so make your offer of proof. I, I don't need to. It's, it's clear. It's very clear. I don't see anything funny either. It's not funny, sir. It's just it's a circular argument. It's You're telling me that it's that clear. I wasn't referring that to you. The person that was that it was referred to know who they are. Well, let's stay on task, please. 
So I, I'm trying go, to. You're it's, claiming it's it goes to bias, may but this, in what may way? I say this for the record, Your Honor. It's hard to stay on task when it seems like the prosecution can ask essentially anything they want to ask. Mr. Brooks, but then when I, I, object, have, I had wait, an wait. objection before. Well, here's the thing. You want to go off target and you want to bring up target. things from the past. I can't explain to you why sometimes the state has an objection and other times they don't. But when, they're not, when an objection has been made, it is my obligation to rule on it. I'm, and so there was an objection. I'm aware, I'm aware of that, Your Honor. But I'm also aware of the fact, and it's, it's clear, that I object quite often, and every single time I object is it's just thrown to the side. Every single time. Well, I would disagree with that characterization, and, sir. And I make my rulings in this why case would you disagree based. With that? I'm like Can an you umpire. Point out one time? I'm like an umpire in a baseball game, sir. I call and see the legal objections as I see them. That is my role, and that is what I do. And are you kidding me? That's that's exactly you're what honored. I do. I'm an umpire, sir. You're I'm, I am a referee in this trial. If you're the um, uh, and let me finish. Okay. Let me finish, okay. Mr. Brooks. I, I okay? apologize. I'm late. So you finish. sometimes parties make objections. Sometimes they don't. There can be a variety of reasons. You make a lot of objections in this case. I, from my perspective, okay, you make a number of objections, I rule on them, and you disagree with them. But that doesn't mean I'm casting things aside. I'm making a call based on the rules of evidence. So for example, if there's a relevance objection, I'm gonna analyze that, okay, based on the objection that's been made. Sometimes I might think there's another basis for something to either come in or not come in. But my rule book, okay, is the rules of evidence, which are the statutes, which once again, I'll point out, I gave you, sir, near the beginning of this trial, so that you would have a better understanding of what those rules are. If you choose not to read them, that's fine. But you cannot then claim that that's, there is somehow foul play because you haven't read them and you don't understand what they are. Your ignorance of the law is not a defense for any of this. Okay, and you getting frustrated with me because you don't understand that, I mean, it's just what it is. But I'm calling these legal shots as I see them. And I will, I've asked you repeatedly for an offer of proof. Um, you want to ask this, this witness who had limited involvement regarding a, a part of an investigation related to that vehicle um, I don't see the relevance, even to bias, um, for which I will allow him to answer that. It's, you haven't given me a legal or factual reason to overrule the objection uh, and to bring the witness back on the stand and to question him about his viewing of any news reports. So with that, uh, we are going to take a very short break. The jury's been out for a little bit, but I recognize it's 325. It'll be a good opportunity for a comfort break. And when we come back on, the state should be prepared to call the next witness. Can I release at least rebuttal to what you just said since you I, actually I don't need got a rebuttal, read. sir. You may not agree with me, but I've made It's, it's not about agreeing. Record. You just told me not to interrupt you, and I didn't. So I, I at least deserve the chance to put on the record... What, what would you like to put on the record as it relates to the specific issue for which I was giving you the opportunity to be heard? Not anything else, not subject matter jurisdiction, not uh, now you whether said the that. state's doing other things. I'm up, only Honor. asking you to address the offer of proof. No, I, if you I wanna, have something, go ahead, but I wanna, only as it relates I to I want to address your position because you said you're like the umpire, right? Well, I'm not going to... Okay, go ahead, sir. I'm not sure why you need to respond because, to that. Because it, it needs to be on the record. If you're the umpire, that means you're the referee. That's what I'm and, doing here and when, today, sir. And when, you're not, you're not refing fair if the jury's not allowed to hear things that they that's important for them to know. I respectfully disagree, sir. Again, just because you believe... The law means you have a right to question all these witnesses about 
uh, who the plaintiff is and about subject matter jurisdiction doesn't make it so. I didn't question anybody so. about that. Okay. Um, that was, it doesn't that was make between it you so. and I. That didn't have nothing to do with a witness. I've, I've you never once question questioned a witness about subject matter jurisdiction. About whether they are aware of complaints. And the funny thing is, sir, I sometimes let that question be answered for reasons that are completely different, I believe, than why you want them in. I am not going to explain that because you can't, I don't have you can't to say explain why, that. What's my reason for asking um, it? Well, I believe you've made it very clear, sir. So here's the bottom I, I line. I don't. One of my roles is to be the umpire. Then you got to be right? fair, Your Honor. You're a public I servant. Need, I am fair, and I'm no, going to follow not. the you're rules not being of fair. evidence, Your Honor. That this is why I say that. Unfettered questioning this is of why I say witnesses that. that are not relevant or that call for hearsay or for a variety of other reasons that are speculative. There's a whole host of reasons in the rules of evidence, sir, that require me to make those determinations. I, you're not I, being fair. I respect you're not that being you fair might though. not think it's always fair, but it's I not. disagree with the characterization. I think it has more to do with your lack of understanding of the rules of evidence and the rules of procedure, which you knowingly and freely and voncarily and deliberately made a choice to represent yourself and and you keep I saying that because it sounds good on the record but it's not peril. it's not accurate you accepted it when you gave me the paperwork your honor I, I gave not, it back to I'm you I'm not going in I didn't I, say that sir so we can go back and rehash all of those things but you know you accepted right? the way that I gave you the paperwork back so once and you I made accept findings that, on the record which I will stand by Sir, so and I'm not, that, I'm not gonna arguing, take, I'm gonna not arguing your findings. I I'm not arguing break. the findings, I'm sure Your Honor. You need to come for I would like to get through one more you gotta, witness today. You got to you got to call it fair. Record, you got State calls its next witness. I want to bring to the party's attention that the court just now issued a decision and order uh, in this case. I've signed it. Uh, Madam Clerk is pulling it through, and I will provide the parties with a written copy here in court. It addresses the matter of subject matter jurisdiction. So we're going to address it? No, I've issued an order. I'm going to give it to you. That's why I'm addressing it. You can review it later, um, but there's a written decision now denying your motion to dismiss. So is, it, is that include and verify proof that you have subject matter jurisdiction? Because it has yet to be verified or proven. Mr. Brooks, you keep making that statement, but it's a misstatement of the requirements in the law. So it doesn't um, have to be proven? You are going to get a written decision. That's how I'm addressing this. And then I'm going to have the jury brought out and just providing courtesy copies to the parties as I uh, had an opportunity to finalize that over the break. I uh, set for value and return for value this document. Thank you for noting that. All right, bring the jury out. State has its next witness, I presume, ready yes. to go? All right, when the jury's brought out, you may call the witness. Is that verified proof that you have subject matter jurisdiction? The decision and order speaks for itself, sir. Is it verified proof that you have it? Sir, yeah. I believe it answers your questions. I, I don't believe Unequivocally. So. There's no ver verified proof proving yet. There's no verified proof if, if we're in common law or admiralty law. What, what court is this? Sir, I believe your answers will be in that decision and order. I don't believe so. Well, have you read it yet? I don't have to. Okay. Well, I accept it for there. value and return for value, so. All right, they're in there, sir. It's a final order. For verified proof is in there? Verified proof so is in there? So if you'd like to challenge that, uh, you can take that up with the appellate courts. Verified proof is in there? All right. Because I don't think it is. Proof of claim is not in there either. No one has a claim. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Statement calls next witness. It calls Carlos Arachiga.